Good morning and welcome. Happy Tuesday. Thank you for listening to Bat Talk with Sharona. I am your host. My name is Sharona. I'm very nervous about today's show because I think in a lot of ways it's probably the most important podcast I've ever done because it does uh, sort of bring together some things that are important to me. Um, it's you know it's interesting that the two topics that we chose for today's show, at the time that we chose them, I didn't see the interconnection, the connections between the two. But, you know, as I sat down to to begin preparing for this podcast and to, um, you know, kind of the, the process, we, you know, we don't script anything here. It's really sort of loosey-goosey in that sense. But because I do get distracted and can go off on a tangent and what have you. I do kind of outline things out so that I'll stay on track and try to cover the things that I would like to cover, which doesn't always happen. Like last time, last podcast, I got on a tangent and didn't finish a, a thought. So, you know, we, we sit down and we map it out, but we don't, we don't script anything here. But so as I was doing that, I started to see kind of the interconnectivity and, and and how the themes kind of you know weave together and you know where I'm at right now in in my life and in the things that I'm writing about and doing outside of the sports arena. Hi Zach. Yes, we do talk about sports on this show. We're not going to talk about sports today, but we do talk about sports on this podcast. We'll do a sports related podcast maybe later in the week. But you know where I'm at is. Now, I'm about to get real with you guys, because when something that is indescribably and horrifically bad happens to you and you survive it, it changes you. You know, it, it changes you fundamentally. And it becomes important to you that the message about those things is done the right way. And and that's why I it was re- recommended to me, you guys know that I have PTSD. And talk about that a little bit, although not a lot, because I don't want, you know, this podcast, while it's me in the sense that it's more important to me, I don't want it to be about me. And so I don't really talk about it a whole lot. But anyway, somebody recommended to a group um, at Instagram where I write about sports. And I've got a new article dropping soon that I hope that you'll read about the NFL uh, domestic violence quote unquote new combine policy. I'll tweet that out when, when it does drop. So um it was recommended in one of our our Slack channels to watch the Eagles of Death Metal documentary. And so I did watch it and it had a very profound impact on me. And so we're gonna talk about that later in the podcast. But so uh, you know that's why I have such a strong and visceral reaction to the to that documentary because Jesse Helms who's a guy who is in this um, rock group Eagles of Death Metal which is the funniest title for a rock band ever um, such a reaction to reasons why it's such a profound reaction is because he feels that way too and this horrific event happened to him and you know the things that bind us and the things that we can use to come together. Are we ever going to come together as people and as humans? I don't know, but, you know, one of my goals is to try to facilitate that. You know, that's that's important to me, that we come to a better understanding of one another and and that we work toward trying to to one another and and come together as as people and humans and um and that's why I'm afraid that I'll mess this up because I have all these thoughts that are crowded in my mind. So we're going to talk about the Eagles of Death Metal documentary in the show. Very short podcast this morning. We've set it up for 45 minutes. We'll see if we go that long. Typically the shorter ones, we try to go between 30 and 45 minutes. But I want to talk about um this notion of freedom of of speech and the Bill Mayer segment with Milo. Um, and I'm not going to try to pronounce his name. I don't try to spell his name. I wish I didn't even have to talk about him. And I understand where he's coming 
from when they say, don't give him publicity, that's what he wants. And it's true, you know, I mean, he's a publicity whore and, um, and all of that. But I think it's important to recognize a couple of things when it comes to him and Mayer and Simon and Schuster and the conservatives have, who embraced him and he was going to speak at CPAC and, and all of that. I think it's important to remember a couple of things. And first is that Milo is not new by any means. He's been around for a while. He um, was, he and his little groupies were a terrorist group on Twitter and acted in a way that was unconscionable. And they were allowed to act that way in part because Twitter didn't do anything about it. And finally, you know, um, we talked about Twitter on the last podcast. You know, Twitter doesn't know who it is and what it is or what it wants to be. It wants to be so many things, too many. I mean, you know, listen to what your users want. But anyway, see, that's an, an example of a tangent that I'll go off on. But, you know, Twitter let this terrorist group on Twitter operate and finally he got banned from from twitter um twitter finally doing the right thing and addressing you know abuse um but you know he's not new people if you are just now realizing a that he a lot of awful things about a lot of things including the fact that he thinks it's okay to have sex with children boys at the age of well, hello, where have you been? This is not new. This is new information and you know, the dance that he's going through trying to play or justify those from well, come on, this isn't new. This is you know, and so you know, Mayor and, and of course Mayor's never gonna come out and say, Oh hey, I probably shouldn't have given that you know, it's interesting to watch the top table. It's really interesting to watch who gets a seat at the table because it's really more often than not overwhelmingly about money. You know? Mayor didn't have him on his show because of freedom of speech. He doesn't ha- his speech doesn't have any value. The only value it has is is as part of a terrorist organization that's committed to hate, that is committed to awful things. What please tell me anything of value that Milo has to say. He doesn't. He has nothing of value to add to any conversation. It's not about freedom of speech, it's about money. Mayor wants the ratings. Simon and Schuster wanted the 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 money from the from the purchase of his book. And it's really funny to me that um, <laughs> funny, ha, you know, I, ironic, funny that like a few days before this video surfaced, I had tweeted out because you know conservatives were trying to justify <clears throat> Mayor trying to justify. You know, promoting his, his speech as some sort of value, valuable commodity, and I tweeted out that conservatives also want to hear, you know, hear and protect your freedom of speech when it comes to beating your wife and abusing your children, and a lot of people have right about that because they draw the line at abusing your children. Um, beating your wife is perfectly okay. Um, because they certainly didn't draw the line at abuse toward women that has been exhibited by the sycophants that are the the people that um, Milo and his ilk represent. And so, you know, it's not about freedom of speech. It's about money. And, um, so it was interesting. <clears throat> excuse me. You know, it was interesting when um, Simon & Schuster announced yesterday that the book that um, they had purchased, you know, given an advance toward, was not going, they pulled it, it was not going to be published. And 
I was contacted shortly after that by someone in the publishing industry and was told that um, it wasn't necessary. And, of course, you knew it wasn't about, you know, them drawing some moral line in the stand, although I'm sure that, you know, the fact that the, the child molestation aspect of it uh, meant from a business standpoint, they knew that they were going to, you know, it was possibly going to lose money and, and what have you. It wasn't going to be the money-making um, proposition that they thought that it would be. And so um, when it comes to the almighty concept of money, um, it was easy to to scuttle it at that point. But it, there were also, from what I understand, from what I've been told, there were problems with the project, too. People working on the project had left, um, and, and it came at a moment where Simon & Schuster could scuttle this project. Um, it had not gone into hard hardback. From what I was told, the book had not gone. I, I have serious questions about whether it was ever going to even – be published in any sort of real form without this because of some of the behind the scenes issues that were com communicated, conveyed to me. Um, but it was able to be scuttled before it went into, into print. You know, they, they, ex, you know, they, they axed it before they had to eat the money from having to, you know, shred or destroy um, the books that they didn't want, you know, they didn't want out on the bookshelves. But, you know, it's okay to abuse women, to talk about, um, you know, to be prejudiced and talk about um, a large number of groups. But, oh, we've got to protect the children, you know, when it, you know, when it comes to children. Now we draw the line, you know, can't, um, you know, can't have – uh, you know, can't promote having sex with children because, you know, that's where the conservatives draw the line here. And, you know, it's it's interesting how, can, you know, people with a conservative point of view, I, I can remember when conservatives really did have a moral center, you know, um, I, 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 I can remember those days and um, you know, I have family members who are conservatives. And so, uh, you know, I, I, I know that there are legitimately people who have good souls, who have good hearts, who are conservatives. And I think that, um, you know, I, I think that Jesse Helms, who is the front man for Eagles of Death Metal, I feel in my heart, I didn't look, spend a lot of time looking up his politics. He, in the documentary, he does say that, you know, in his first life before he became this rock star, that he lived a conservative way of life. I feel pretty certain that he probably is a conservative. You know, that's probably his politics. But I can still relate to him as a human watching what he went through, watching him talk about what he went through and the pain that he experienced. And, you know, here's the thing, people, if you want other people to value who you are and what you think and what you feel, you know, you kind of have to value other people, too. You can't expect someone to value you or love you if you don't extend that same hand, right? I mean, I guess you can, but how realistic is it? How I mean, is that the right way to do things? Is that the right way to go about things? I don't think so. I don't think it's um I don't think it's very effective. I think it turns people off and and so um so we'll talk about that later. I don't want to get into the the documentary just yet cuz I still have a few more thoughts to to lay on you about the whole Milo thing and the scuttling of the book. You know, um it, again, who gets invited to the table, who gets a voice, who gets heard is important. And giving a voice to someone with no real good message and only for the money is 
you know, is that's not what freedom of speech is is all about. It's about a whole lot more than that. And you know, and it's important to remember that a first of all, freedom of speech is a lot of di- I mean it's it is a hugely important doctrine. It's important to understand it, but it doesn't operate in in, in the private arena. You know, private companies don't have to give a voice to everyone. All right? They don't. They don't have to, you know, if you had a private company and you hired someone to come and give a speech about things that were a wrong lies and b you know against everyone's moral fiber moral code you know you're not you, i mean that's you're not doing a very good job right you know you don't want to bring someone in who's going to make your company worse you you you're not going to bring someone in who's going who spreads lies who is factually inaccurate you know um you want to bring people in who who are going to you know make make your company better make your product better make whatever it is you're doing better and so this notion that um private companies have to have to offer um you know a seat at the table to people whose speech has no value is ludicrous <laughs> it's absolutely ludicrous and um you know hate speech isn't what freedom of speech is designed to protect in fact um there is a part of freedom of speech that says hey listen you know speech that incites violence which is what Milo does. Speech that incites violence isn't protected by freedom of speech. And so, no, you know, you're not promoting or protecting freedom of speech when you promote or support what what Milo and, and, and his terrorist organization, his terrorist group says, what they do. That's antithetical to – it's the antithesis of what freedom of speech is is designed to protect and represent. And so, um, you know, it's, 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 it's interesting that, you know, we, we give that kind of seat to someone, but we don't give the seat to the people who, you know, who preach a message of um, – you know, love and unity and, um, you know, who want to talk about the, um, you know, the, the inequity or whatever. So, it, you know, it's, we're living in an interesting period of time where uh, it, the meme generation, the, um, the gotta hear both sides, you know, you know, you don't gotta hear both sides. You don't have to hear both sides of everything. When one side is spouting lies spouting prejudice, spouting, hey, you don't have to listen to that, okay? You know? Hey, it's okay to rape a child under the age of 13. That speech doesn't have, that, you don't have to promote that speech. Hey, it's okay to beat your wife if she says she doesn't feel like cooking dinner. You don't have to promote that speech. That speech doesn't, I mean, that speech doesn't have value. You got to hear both sides. Well, I mean, when the other side is delusional and spitting lies, you know, you you don't have to promote that. So, you know, it's it, it, it troubles me that we use false dichotomies to try to justify a lot of things. So that, um, all right, so we're going to take another quick break. When we come back, we're going to take a quick break. So when we come back, we're going to talk about this Eagles of Death Metal documentary um, coming together as people. Some of the quotes from that documentary are, are I think, good and important. Uh, so stay tuned in. You're listening to Bat Talk with Sharona.
All right, welcome back. You're tuned in and listening to Bat Talk with Sharona. I am your host. My name is Sharona. By the way, you can follow me out there on Twitter at Sports by Sharona. Check out my website, Bat Talk with Sharona. We talk about things that um, we write about, the things that we talk about on the podcast. We write about other things. We write about cats. Um, and, And when I say we... I include the people who are generous enough to donate their time to come on the podcast. No guests this morning. It's just me talking to you, talking about stuff. Um, but I, I use the the collective we because the people who come on the the show, who um, you know, donate their time and and who and a lot of t- a lot of times who expose themselves because you know, some people who've come on the show have. Um, you know, experience some of the backlash and hate that that you experience when you talk about things that are important to you. So, you know, it, we use that we because um, I, I do feel like we're all in this together. And it may not always seem that way, you know, because we seem to be living, we don't seem to be, we are living in an age of division and an age where hate seems to be winning but I don't think that I think human spirit is stronger than that and so you know when when I sat down to watch this docu- this documentary and I didn't I had never heard of Eagles of Death Metal all right I had never heard of them um, I didn't know who they were so I sat down to watch this documentary, and it really is, you know, um, it's a lot of things. It's it is it's about friendship. It's a beautiful story about friendship between these two guys who started this band. It's a story about reinventing yourself. It's a story about love. It is a story about hate. And it's a story about overcoming. And it's also, and it's not intended to be, but it's also a story about PTSD and what that does to you. And so as I was watching this documentary and I'm looking at Jesse and I am, you know, watching, it's like looking in a mirror, you know, it was so weird because he obviously looks nothing like me and I'm, fairly certain his politics are nothing like mine and maybe maybe in some ways they are uh, because I think that we do share a you know like a common bond in that you know you can't let the bad things that happen to you turn you into you know a hate-filled person and that you feel a responsibility to the other survivors of what you've experienced to, you know, to be a message of, of light and love and hope and the things that, you know, that bond us and bring us together. And so, you know, so I'm reading, so I'm reading, I'm watching this documentary and it's so weird and odd to be looking at someone who's so different from you and going, oh shit, I've, I understand that, you know, and one of the things that the first thing that stood out to me, and I think I tweeted this out and I actually wrote it in my notes. One of the things that he said about when he was in that moment and this, and and if you're not familiar, this documentary is, um, it concerns the, the terrorist attacks that, that happened in Paris in November of 2015, and they were giving a concert at the at the Bataclan, and um, this terrible terrorist attack struck there, struck a lot of different places in in Paris, and over 100 people were killed. 130 people, I believe, were killed. 89 were killed at this concert, this rock concert. Hundreds were were wounded, and it it was a terrible tragedy for the world and um you know and it's important to to i think you know to watch these things and to understand the impact that that they have on people so i'm watching this this documentary and one of the things that he said just really kind of stood out to me 
because he said he's watching this tragedy go down. He said it tasted like I had copper pennies in my mouth. And I was like, dude, because I know that taste, you know. God, I know that taste. And it's like, that's so weird, you know, to to watch and see they say something like that and go, wow, you know, I know that. And so, you know, it was it was weird to watch him and to to and especially when he was giving an interview. There's an interview later on in the documentary, you know, where he's talking about going back to Paris and 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 do and finishing this concert that was interrupted and, and what that meant to him as, you know, as a person, as a rock star as a survivor of, of this horrific thing and and I'm watching him and, and and I know and it's like, you know, I know what he's going through because he's sitting there at one point he's sitting there and one of his legs is like bouncing up and down, you know, and which is I do a lot. Um when I'm talking about about things like that and so like it, it, so it's so weird, you know, to, to be watching to have this connection with someone that you don't know who's so different in so many ways from you but so similar you know I mean, wow, you know, it's I'm trying to think of a way to put it it's, you know and, and and I don't mean to put words or lies in into his mouth or his brain but the thing the thought that comes to my mind is I know what it's like to to be him and and to you know to have a memory or memories that are you know so bad and so hard that the pain inside of you is so great that you want to get out from inside your own skin and and maybe he wasn't thinking that or maybe he wasn't experiencing that moment. But no, I, I kind of feel like, you know, maybe he was, and that's a terrible feeling, you know. It's a terrible feeling. So anyway, it was just odd to to watch. And it's really a very, very powerful documentary. You, you, we can't hide our heads in the sand about what bad people in this world are doing. And there are people committing terrorist acts. They don't all look the same. Some of them are white Protestant males. The most recent terrorist attack was committed by a white male in in Canada. Um, Bad people are in every group, every organization, but so are good people. You know, so are the good people who want to make the world a better place. And we're never going to come together as humans or as people until we learn to look at people who are different from us, who necessarily have the same views or the same ideas as us. But that doesn't mean they're, you know, I mean, that doesn't mean that they're not good people, you know. The bad people are the people who want to do bad things and who think that it's okay to go into a church or a movie theater or a rock concert and kill a bunch of people because they're dreadfully unhappy with their life and and with themselves. Those are the bad people. The good people can't let the bad people win. I know that sounds simplistic, but maybe it is just that simple, right? And so some of the things that, some of the quotes from the guys in there, I think, are are, are pretty important. And <clears throat> and I'll end with this one. And this is from his friend, John, his friend, I believe it's John Homme, is his friend. And he said, he said this, and I'm going to leave you with this. He said, the world just stays together because of love and light and hope.
And let's all try to spread a little bit more of love and light and hope. So that's it for today. Thanks for listening. You've been listening to Bat Talk with Sharona. Again, I'm your host. My name is Sharona. You can follow me on Twitter, Sports by Sharona. And, hey, we'll be back Friday. We'll talk. You've been listening to Bat Talk with Sharona. I love you all the time.